Hello traders, welcome to a new video here on the channel. So today we're gonna have our final video in what is our ultimate beginner's guide to chart pattern trading and technical analysis. Today we're gonna be discussing triangles, which is the most uh, broad uh, topic, I would say, as far as the classical patterns, as they can be both reversal and continuation. If you've missed the past videos, make sure to check out my playlist on it for an in-depth analysis of each of these classical patterns. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit thumbs up. That helps the channel immensely. And so without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Okay, so here we have, this is the diagram where I've basically been following this whole series. If, like I said, if you haven't seen all the last videos, make sure to check those out on my channel playlist. We've already gone over all the reversal and continuation patterns, uh, including everything you see here. For today's uh, last video here for this classical pattern series, we're gonna go over triangles, which as you can see, it's considered a neutral pattern because depending on their shape, it gives us different indications. We got three main types, symmetrical, ascending, and descending. So let's go and look at each one of this in detail with lots of chart examples. So triangle patterns are very common in trading and are set to be a neutral pattern because depending on the shape and overall trend direction before the formation of the pattern, we can infer if we expect a breakout, uh, where we can expect a breakout from. There are, uh, they all share characteristics where price is coiling and contracting near an apex point around the tip where the trend lines or support resistance meets and we can expect a high volume breakout to confirm the pattern. So we divide them in three types. We got the uh, ascending bullish, ascending triangle, which is uh, bullish. And we see the example right up here where price is coiling, but we're forming higher lows and there's a resistance level that's just being hit and hit time and time again. And as you've seen in uh, technical analysis, when we have a level that is continuously being hit over and over, that means that level is getting weaker. So on an ascending triangle, we expect a bullish breakout. Descending will be the exact opposite. We're making lower lows, lower highs, I mean. Uh, and then a support level just keeps getting hit over and over with a lot of sell pressure. And then the symmetrical triangle just looks like uh, two trend lines that are coming together at an apex point. Price is just coiling up, making lower highs, lower lows. And usually we have a follow through in the direction of the previous trend into it. So first, let's look at detail at the symmetrical triangles. So they're very similar to pennants in shape. As you remember from our pennant video, we saw that a pennant is basically when you have an impulsive move and then you have a little consolidation before we continue higher. So you can see the shape is very similar, but with pennants, they form after uh, quick impulsive moves and they're a short term pattern. Like pennants usually just take a few minutes or maybe a couple of hours to form before we have continuation uh, or a few hours whereas with triangles they can be very long term uh, and they don't necessarily happen right after an impulsive move these triangles are characterized by price making lower highs and higher lows between two trend lines with volumes decreasing, so trading activity is decreasing because we're leading up to some moment. Usually these things happen during uh, low volume market hours or also when we're about to have some kind of news event 
or some catalyst that is going to bring an impulsive or some type of movement. And so traders are mostly on the sidelines just waiting. And so that's why we see price action behaving like this, where it's just sort of volumes are waning and it's just sort of contracting. Uh, normally, we expect a breakout in the direction of the underlying trend before the triangle formation. So as we can see in the example here, we were coming up on an uptrend. We started forming the triangle. We had it formed and then we have in this case a high volume breakout. We always want to see like every pattern high volumes coming in on the breakout to confirm it is a real breakout. And we want to see some kind of high time frame close outside of the pattern because this could easily go up and just come back in and that was just a fake out and a lot of people were caught off guard chasing the high here. So we want to see high volumes confirming a true breakout. And um, uh, yeah, in this case, we expect the breakout to continue this uptrend here. We can measure the height of the triangle and we can use that as a guideline for profit targets. But again, always you want to do it in conjunction with other factors. You want to check out what's to the left of the chart. Maybe you have some important gaps here. There's some resistance support levels, supply demand areas, etc. But as you can see, we can take a measurement in here. This rectangle is measuring the highest uh, area of the triangle. And then we just project that on the breakout point. And that is an area where we could look to take profits on this pattern. So here we're going to go over several examples. This is in Forex. Australian dollar US dollar four hour. You can see we have an uptrend coming up. Then we start forming here. As you can see, this took several weeks to form. So this is the difference between pennants and triangles is that triangles are patterns that form over longer periods of time. So you can see we have this formation. We're making lower highs, higher lows. And then finally, right at this point, I don't have the volumes here uh, put on for when I took this screenshot, but you want to see in this case right over here you want to see high volumes coming up right here at the area of the breakout and then like i said if you missed the breakout and you were not positioned beforehand you don't want to just go like in here and start chasing buying you ideally want to wait in this case you can see we had a very nice retest back here and then that gives us just an opportunity and then here we have our measured move. We have our triangle here and we have it here and we can see how we just hit our target right there. And in this case, our stop losses will usually, if you want to give it a little more uh, room to be more conservative, we would put our stop loss right below the bottom uh, trend line here on the pattern. Uh, let's look at some stocks. We have here Tesla daily chart. And we can see how we're coming up here. Then we formed a symmetrical triangle making higher highs, higher lows. And then right here we here we actually have a gap all the way outside of the pattern. We opened right here. This was probably on a weekend or um, and then we open right out here outside of the triangle. We pull back and then we had a retest right on our upper trend line. This is the same as support resistance levels. You know, this I've talked about this a lot. If you have a resistance level getting hit continuously and we break out, we expect it to be support on the upside. The same thing applies to trend lines. If you got a trend line and then you break out of it, now this is a support resistance level only on a diagonal plane. So now all these resistances once broken we expect support from the other side now and you can see how we continued and we can have taken a measurement of this and we can see we would have hit it right around here let's look at netflix daily chart again we're coming up forming a symmetrical triangle here 
And in this case, we just had a gap up and we didn't even look back. We didn't come to retest. We just gapped up outside of the pattern and just kept going. Uh, here's another example with Bitcoin 15 minute chart. In this case, we can see we're coming down. We form a symmetrical triangle, but we're actually breaking out. And even here, just looking at this, we could even have drawn this two ways. We could have had this trend line or we could have gotten with a uh, more outer trend line here, which we can see is just getting retested. Again, now we're coming down and we're sort of breaking up. I didn't this when I took the screenshot that was the live chart at that moment, but I do believe this was actually a fake out and we did break down and continue lower here because we did because obviously by the time I'm recording this Bitcoin is actually down at like $35,000 in price. So we definitely continued down. This was just sort of a fake out outside of the pattern and then but the overall trend just continued down now let's talk about ascending triangles so this triangles are a good bullish action pattern where we have price making higher lows while we have a horizontal resistance level above as price come back over and over to test that resistance it starts getting weaker and the bulls show their strength by keeping price making higher swing lows into the resistance so therefore we're building the upside breakout pressure so ascending and descending triangles are probably my favorite of the classical chart patterns because again a lot some of these get a bad rep saying that they you know it's all hindsight and most of them don't have a high hit rate and again that's why we use many different confluence factors we don't just blindly trade off of one single element but i feel like ascending descending triangles are very good because it's showing me very strong buying pressure and i know that levels the more get they tested the weaker they become so this is sort of a combination of two key factors that i like to see which is levels being hit over and over and price making in this case higher lows so as price coils higher we expect resistance to eventually break on the strong buying and we have a breakout of the resistance we look to enter long either pre-breakout which is a little bit riskier because we're sort of anticipating the momentum breakout or um, once we see a high volume breakout with a confirmed uh, higher time frame like one hour or higher close above the pattern outside then we can look for any pullbacks and a retest of this broken resistance now turned support or at least we expect it to turn into support and the same thing we can do a measurement here of the triangle ascending and project it on the breakout to have some profit target ideas. Let's go over some examples here. This is the S&P 500 five minute chart. So as you can see, price has been coming down. We start just going sideways pretty much here. This is a very low time frame chart, but I wanna show how this works on all time frames. And again, we have a very clear resistance level that has been um has rejected price now for one two three times but look at here here we have like a very nice upwards channel and then an impulse breakout to continue the upside through this resistance level here just making higher lows continuously in this case we didn't get an immediate retest so you would have either have to have look for an entry pre-breakout when you see that this last rejection really failed to just bring prices lower or you can just wait for some kind of pullback later on or you could have just gone around the you know try to go in on the breakout but again you know it's a little bit riskier if you want to just chase uh the movements 
upwards when we have a, in this case a breakup let's go into ethereum <coughs> sorry one second let's go into ethereum dollar one hour this is the coinbase chart you can see this is a pattern that took several weeks to form where we have a very clear resistance here we've rejected price three times but this is the key uh, identifier as far as triangles that I love to see we have three times resistance rejection but every time we rejected we're making higher lows that tells us that buying is getting stronger and the sellers are not coming in as actively so you got to think about that why are people not actively selling here are they all getting absorbed by big buyers or they also see that this is most likely not gonna really hold this resistance and they start pulling orders and this whole combination of buy sell activity in this case just indicates to us that this is prime for a breakout we can see we come one last time a fourth time it did reject but then look at all this hourly candles here that are just like sort of chopping right around resistance that is a clear indication that this level is just getting very weak and then in this case we just have our upside breakout let's look at the Dow Jones industrial average this is the one minute chart you can see again clear resistance right here price we have this up upside trend line just giving us a visual guideline for all the higher lows we're making until we finally got our breakout here and now let's go down to the last category which is descending triangles so the same characteristics that i just spoke about ascending is just going to be inverted for descending and like i said these are patterns that i really like because i feel ascending and descending patterns are pretty high odds and they also let you it they give you a pretty close um pretty set and validation point so these are strong bearish patterns where price is contracting downwards between a descending trend line making lower highs and a horizontal support level below price keeps retesting the support repeatedly making it weaker and weaker with the building bearish pressure from the sellers until we expect the support to collapse near the apex point between the two lines where they're about to meet as always we expect a high volume breakout from the pattern and I'll, and look to either short pre-breakout or more conservatively to short a retest back to the broken support now turn resistance so in this case same concept we have a support continuously being hit clean break of it and a high time frame close outside of it on high volumes and then we can look to sell pullbacks into it to continue the downtrend and we can take measurements from the highest part of the triangle and again project it on the breakout point as a guideline for profit taken uh, objectives let's go over a few examples here this two on bitcoin these are classic examples that i always like to refer back to on the higher time frame this is a three-day chart so this is a long long time this is many months of action we can see this was the 2020 high and then we can see how we have the support level that is basically tested like seven times in a row on the higher time frame but look at this every time we bounce is just weaker weaker with lower highs and then we had this very strong close below it and then price just continued here and then the same here on a smaller scale here we have this support level that has been tested about four times making lower highs and then finally a high volume close below in here and again this this down move over here and over here might not look very large because we're looking at a very high time frame chart but you know this is a very significant move at that time for the 
Okay, continuing here on the next example, we have a dollar Canadian dollar daily chart. So we can see we had a big impulsive move up, then a down move, a strong down move would break market structure to the downside. Now price just starts sort of chopping and consolidating, but we can see how we got a clear support level right around 1.39 that just keeps getting hit and we're making lower highs until we finally have this huge bearish um, engulfing bar here confirming a close below and then we just sell off and then the last example here we got the gold spot us dollar one hour chart and we can see how in this case i can even expand this trend line here as we can see this support level goes back even further and we can see how we're just continuously retesting it over and over and yet we're making lower highs this was just a wick above we can see it was just a fake out of this previous swing high we just liquidated stops it was a stop run close back inside and the sell-off continues and then we have this huge solid hourly candle down and then out of the pattern and then we just sell off over here we could have taken a measurement of this projected it here and then we can see we pretty much hit the target uh pretty easily there okay so with that guys that's pretty much it for this triangles video again if the is all these videos have been helpful please consider hitting that uh, subscribe button hitting thumbs up it'll help the channel keep expanding if you missed all the other uh, videos on the series make sure to go check out my playlist so you can go over the head and shoulders the pennants wedges flags channels all the different patterns that I've covered in this and remember to go check out my uh, website here for more information on all my trading courses that i have available and you can follow me on all my social media accounts for continuing um, information i post uh, charts analysis etc with all of you any questions or comments leave them down below and i'll see you all in the next video take care